Hey y'all, I'm Mandy, and this is Mandy in the Making. Welcome back to another What's for Dinner. If you're new here, I do these videos every single week, and I would love for you to join my YouTube family so you don't miss another one. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button below. It is free, and it just lets YouTube know that you don't wanna miss any of my videos. For our first meal of the week, I'm making lemon butter chicken and a quick and easy garlic and Parmesan orzo. So I'm gonna prep everything for both the side dish and our main dish. These are gonna be cooking at the same time, so I just wanna make sure everything is ready so that I can kind of switch back and forth over there at the stove. One of the recipes calls for shallot and my grocery store didn't have any left, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of onion instead. Lastly, I just need to chop up just a little bit of this parsley. This is just gonna be the finishing touch on our chicken. So I've got really thick chicken breasts here. I'm gonna cut them in half, and then I'm also gonna go ahead and pound them out to make them super thin. And we are going to salt and pepper them and then put them in some flour. I've got about a third a cup or so of flour and we will dip them in on both sides. I didn't want my clothes to get messy, so I thought I would break out the apron. I don't use it as often as I should. I pr should probably use it every single time because I always get stuff all over me. Anyway, let's do this. So this is just to make sure that it, they're all kind of even and they're thin, but it's also tenderizing the chicken breasts. And we just want these lightly coated doesn't have to be super thick or anything. Now let's get started on the orzo first. I'm just gonna turn our pan to about medium high. You wanna make sure you have a pan that has a good depth to it because you are gonna be adding some liquid. I've got two tablespoons of unsalted butter. We're gonna melt that down. I'm gonna go ahead and saute our onions. I'm just gonna cook these until they're soft and at the very end, I'm gonna add in our garlic just so it doesn't burn. Got two cloves of garlic that's been minced. Now I'm gonna add in one cup of milk, two cups of chicken broth, some salt and pepper, and about a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder. So I whisked it and made sure that I got everything up off of the bottom of the pan. And now I'm gonna add in a cup of dry orzo. Okay, I'm gonna set the timer for about 10 minutes and we're gonna bring this up into it like a bubble or a boil and then we will turn down the heat. I've got our large skillet heated to about medium high heat. I'm gonna add in a little bit of olive oil couple of tablespoons of butter and let that melt down. This has started to bubble. I'm gonna turn it down to about medium low. And we're just gonna let this simmer and hang out until the pasta is cooked. Okay, I'm gonna have to work in two batches since we have six chicken breasts, but we're just gonna cook these until they're done. Our orzo is done. I'm gonna add in about three-fourths a cup of Parmesan cheese. We're gonna let that melt down. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off. And I'm gonna add in a couple of handfuls of baby spinach. And 
I'm just gonna stir this in and let it wilt down and this will be ready. In this same skillet, I've turned down the heat to about medium. I'm gonna add a little more olive oil and we're gonna saute our garlic. We're just going to let this saute for like 20 seconds just until I can smell it. Now I'm gonna add in half a cup of chicken broth. And we need about three tablespoons of lemon juice. We're gonna let this simmer for just a couple of minutes. We want it to reduce down to about half of the amount of liquid that's in there now. So that is reduced down. I'm adding in four tablespoons of unsalted butter. I'm gonna let this melt. I zested the lemon and I have about a half a teaspoon or so of lemon zest. That's gonna go in there with it. I'm just adding our chicken breast back in here. And I'm just kinda letting them soak up some of that good lemony, garlicky flavor. And it's gonna be time to eat. Yeah, this looks like something out of a restaurant for sure. It really does. Really good. It's been smelling so good in here. Mm -hmm. Wow. You did it again. I did it again. This is amazing. Yay. Definitely a restaurant quality. Mmm. That lemon, buttery, flavor of the chicken. I mean, it is held really well in that, um, in that crust. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this looks really good. Mm. That is super creamy. It really Love is. Love the texture of that. Very creamy. And with the spinach in there, uh -huh. oh, that is a nice touch. Thumbs up. Good job. What about from you, Cole? Cole's too busy eating, but he gave me a... Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have to try this. That chicken... What did you just say, babe? Oh, my word. I mean, I would legit order this. From a restaurant. For sure. It is so tender. And he's right. That flour made all of the flavors just stick right to it. It is so good, y'all. Hey y'all, tonight I'm making stuffed shells with spinach. Okay, I'm getting everything ready. The fun thing about tonight, I have no chopping to do. Like I'm gonna chop up the parsley to go on top at the end, but other than that, that's it. I do need to lightly beat these eggs, so I'm gonna do that really quickly. And then we're gonna go over to the stove and get started. I've got one pound of ground Italian sausage. This is the mild, but if you wanted to spice it up, and if my store would have had spicy, I would have gotten it but you could totally get the spicy Italian sausage instead. So now this is cooked up, I'm just going to transfer it over here to this plate. And then in this same skillet, I'm gonna add four cups of baby spinach. I did go ahead and remove the stems. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat off and take it off of the heat. And let's go ahead and put our shells in the water. And these are the jumbo shells. We're just going to cook them until they are pliable so that we can fill them with the cheese. Hey, in this big mixing bowl, I've got 12 ounces of mozzarella. I'm gonna use 
about two thirds of it right now. I've got three fourths a cup of Parmesan cheese. And again, I'm gonna use about two thirds of it. We're just reserving this extra cheese to go on top of the dish. Okay, I've got a 32 ounce container of ricotta cheese. Our two eggs. I've got a teaspoon of dried oregano. And then this next part, this looks like a lot of garlic powder, but she promised that you're supposed to use a whole lot. So this is four teaspoons of garlic powder. You know what, I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper too. Okay, I'm gonna mix this up and then once this gets combined, I'm gonna add in our spinach. So this is what I mean by pliable. Without them breaking, you can move them around, but they are definitely like al dente. They are not all the way done, but these are gonna go in the oven in just a few minutes, so they will be perfect by the time it's time to eat. I've got this 45 ounce jar of spaghetti sauce. I got the chunky, garden chunky tomato, onion, and garlic. I think you could use whatever brand, whatever kind you prefer. Just pouring this entire thing in the bottom of this 9 by 13 pan. Here comes the fun part. So I'm going to take each one and put some cheese mixture inside and then set it down into the spaghetti mixture or the spaghetti sauce I mean and line the whole pan just like that. So when you get one like this turn it to the end so you can kind of push it open like that. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> now I'm just gonna take this Italian sausage and just sprinkle it all over the top. I'm gonna take our leftover cheese and just kinda sprinkle it across the top. I'm just gonna cover this. And this is going in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. So it's been in for 30 minutes. I'm taking the top off and I'm gonna put it back in for another five minutes or so. If you didn't have glass, you could definitely broil it if you wanted to as well. The recipe called for dried parsley, but I already had this fresh parsley on hand. So I'm just gonna run a knife through this really quickly and it's gonna go on top. So we're gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes before we serve it. Comfort food. Comfort food at its finest. This looks really good. Mmm. The shells are perfect. Perfectly cooked. I love that ricotta cheese stuffing with the uh, spinach in there. That's a really nice touch. With that sausage on there, lots of flavor in that sausage. So, four teaspoons of garlic powder. Are you like overwhelmed with garlic or do you no, think not at all. mellowed out? No, it's perfectly seasoned. Cole mm -hmm. gave me a thumbs up. Well, he, he was nodding over there while he was eating. So, oh, oh, there we go. So it is kid approved for sure. Gracie, is it Gracie approved? Tonight we're trying a new recipe to us. It's called Mexican casserole and it is our subby supper. Tonight's subby supper comes from Celeste. She is married to Raymond. I love this picture of them that she shared. I think it probably captures their personalities perfectly. And then they also have four children. They have two boys, Aiden and Miles, and two girls, Tori Grace and Naya. 
She said their family is always in the kitchen and they always have people coming and going through their home. And she said that Raymond, her husband, is quick to tell people that if they're hungry, they are more than willing to feed them. I love that. When I emailed her back this week and said that this sounded good and we wanted to try it, she said it was kind of funny because it's on their menu plan for the week too. So we're both enjoying it this week. We can't wait to try it. Thank you, Celeste, for sending it in. Before we get started on the meal, I want to make some homemade ranch dressing just so that we have that to go on top. That's how Celeste serves it, so we wanna do just like she does. Um, I say homemade, but I'm just using the ranch powder. So let's get this in the refrigerator because it needs to set up for like 30 minutes. I really love this new container. I had one from the Dollar Tree and it was okay, but it leaked all the time. And I like to shake my dressing up. I don't like to just stir it. This does not leak at all. I have it linked in my Amazon store below if you're looking for a good one. Before I get everything on the stove, I am gonna add onion to our ground beef. Celeste says, I think she has one or two picky eaters in her house. So she says she does not add onion, but we love onion. So I'm gonna dice this up really quickly. Okay, I have four cups of water that is boiling. I'm gonna add four tablespoons of olive oil and this entire bag of yellow rice. This is a one pound bag. So all I'm doing is cooking it as per the directions on the back of the bag. two pounds of lean ground beef. We're gonna brown this up. While this is cooking, I am gonna go ahead and add some onion in here. I did wanna mention that the recipe calls for one pound of ground beef, but I'm pretty much kind of doubling this. We do wanna have some leftovers but when you look in the description box below, you'll see that I'm just putting her original recipe in there, so I just doubled it. Next, I'm just gonna pour this whole can of cheddar cheese soup into a saucepan. So I've just turned this like on medium low, and we're just gonna let this heat through and combine really well. I'm gonna go ahead and preheat the oven to 375. Teamwork, baby. Okay, so we've drained this. I'm gonna add, this is six tablespoons of taco seasoning since I have two pounds of ground beef. And I've got about a cup of water. I may have to add more water. I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it and see how it goes. Now I think one cup is gonna be fine. Another thing Celeste said that you could add is a can of Rotel. So I'm gonna open this up and drain it and then add this in with the taco meat. In hindsight, I probably should have added the milk a little bit slower. So I'm just going through and whisking it just to make sure all of the clumps of the cheese soup has been broken up. So the meat mixture is our bottom layer. I'm trying to empty some of it out before I pick it up. It's kind of heavy with two pounds of ground beef in it. I'm just pressing this down. And I'm gonna go grab the cheese soup and pour that over top and it's gonna seep through the rice all the way down into the meat. This is taco blend cheese. I'm gonna cover it in this. This is gonna go in the oven at 375 for 30 minutes. This smells so good. And I did want to mention that she said put it in for 30 minutes 
and make sure that the cheese starts to get like a golden brown, which is exactly what this did. This looks very interesting. So I love that you can kind of just do whatever toppings you want. So we've got some jalapeno, lettuce, tomato. He put some hot sauce on his. Of course, tortilla chips. You could do sour cream. Yep. All kinds of goodness. Yeah, I like the flexibleness of it. Yeah. Mmm. Oh yeah, this is really fun. It's like going up to Moe's Southwest Grill and getting like a burrito bowl or something like yeah. that. Yeah. That's what mm. I was thinking of, like Chipotle or Moe's or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm, I love that rice. Wow, that rice is so good. And then with the, the beef. So this is a keeper? Oh yeah, this is like, this is like a, an alternative to like taco night. Yeah. Good alternative for that. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Celeste. I knew this was going to be a hit from the moment like we assembled everything together. I could just tell. I cannot wait to dig in. Look at all this cheese. What? All that cheese? Man, that cheese in there. <laughs> it's just loaded. Gracie says, I know about that cheese. <laughs> and y'all haven't given me any of it. Ain't that right, Grace? <laughs> so I tried the ranch on mine and I was like, y'all are missing out. So they've been trying it. What you think, Ben? It's really good. I like it. I want, I want to get another taste though. Mmm. It's good, right? Like mm -hmm. it cools it down just a little bit, adds a creamy texture to it. I don't know. Oh yeah. It's really good. <laughs> it is really good with the ranch. So. I like some nice little touch. Mm-hmm. Definitely try ranch with it. I see why she serves it that way. Mm -hmm. That's it for the... Uh -huh. Stop! That's it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. That does help out my channel. It also helps out my channel if you hit that subscribe button. If that subscribe button is still red below the video, that means you're not subscribed. Click it now and you will see all of my videos coming up. Thanks y'all and I'll see you next time. Bye.